All right, so we are live. So hello, everyone. And for all of you who are maybe hopping on bit by bit. So I am Dahlia, helping young professionals with international careers. And this is Arzo, who I'm going to introduce you to. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to sharing her story because she's been really inspirational in terms of everything she's put into the process and her focus. And I will let her introduce herself. Hello, Arzo. Hi, Dahlia. Thanks for having me here. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So why don't you start by just telling us a little bit about, you know, where are you right now? What part of the world are you in? And then what, what's a little bit about your background? And then where were you when you first started this process? What was the rut that you were basically having to deal with? Yeah, so hi everyone. Uh, my name is Arzo. I act, I'm based in the U.S., Northern California, and I've been working uh, in public health for quite some time now, quite a few years now. And um, one of the struggles before I even embarked on this journey is that I, I had some setbacks that I had imposed on myself. So it was, would have, it was financials. It was financially, it was, um, you know, personal growth, it was, it could be cultural families, um, and also just having the confidence of like, can I really embark on this, on this mission that I have, my goal that I have. So um, I, I, I was exposed from a very young age to humanitarian work. I've, I was born and raised in the Netherlands. So I have an international background, but originally I'm Afghan, so I speak multiple languages. So with that in, you know, instilled in me, I, I uh, always wanted to, you know, work internationally, um, especially with helping other people. I felt that I was privileged enough to have the opportunities that I have, um, you know, um, gained and wanted to give back to the world. So, so that was some struggles. Well, um, so I, I finished high school in America, started college here. I got my bachelor's in international studies, my master's in public health. And, but, you know, getting recognized international market, like Dahlia says, the hidden job market is so difficult. Um, and I think networking was one of the main issues that really, you know, really, um, really would set the stepping stone for me to get where I am today. Yeah, and so tell me a bit more about everything you had done. I mean, basically, what was your main goal? It was to get an international career, right? Work internationally in global health. Yeah, yeah. And why was that important to you versus just staying in, in the U.S., doing what you were doing before? My work that I, so when, uh, shortly after college, I, I did have a great opportunity that I've been, I've had great work experience here. Um, it includes from child policy to um, working with refugees, Syrian refugees um, that I've helped get resettled in in Northern California, but and also did some um, you know lobbying again for policy work. But it was it wasn't really as fulfilling because it was on a smaller scale. And my current job right now that I had, um, it it's a local uh, it's a local organization, nonprofit organization that helps helped refugees and uh, Afghan immigrants. However, it was on a small scale because we were so limited due to our funding. And I always had the goal of my dream is that to work, to work on a global scale, to have a bigger impact on other people. And especially people who are in vulnerable communities and, and in um, countries. So the, yeah, so that was one of, that was one of the goals that really made me want to pursue uh, my goals. Mm -hmm. And I know that, you know, the, the kinds of positions you had, you were getting that experience, but you always felt like it would be a stepping stone, right? So at what point did you realize, oh, I'm still not, I still haven't achieved my, my real goal. I'm still stuck on the stepping stone. And how did you realize you were getting stuck yeah. as opposed to just continuing to do, it, to do what you were doing in hopes that the situation would eventually change on its own? So um, my, I, uh, a lot of people pursue higher education, like getting a, a master's degree so they can advance their careers. And, and I, I knew that going into you know, global health, I needed my master's. Because there, there's sometimes you can get away with having an awesome position and not needing your master's. But again, times have changed. And so I went ahead and pursued my master's. A year after that, I noticed that, well, now that I have my master's, I should be getting noticed. And still, 
that wasn't happening, especially for abroad or for even positions that I saw online that I was completely qualified qualified for, but somehow um, they wouldn't, maybe my resume was misread. And that, so another major stepping stone for me was that when I found at my current job, I um, my supervisor wanted to train me to take over her uh, position as the executive director for the nonprofit organization. And I realized that, that I'm helping I'm helping her to graduate, uh, to retire and making sure that her founding organization is, is still in motion, is still active. However, that was her goal. It was a my goal. And that's when I realized that, okay, I'm getting comfortable where I am right now and I need to get out of that where I need to pursue my own goals. And then I start taking a step back and to realize, okay, what are, what are my visions? What are my goals? What do I want? Because as young professionals, we don't, we, we get a job, we get comfortable, you get a good pay and that's it. And that's not what I wanted at all. And I realized that that was happening. I was going towards that. And that's when I said that I need to make a drastic change. How long ago did you have that realization? So I had it in the beginning of 2018. So um, I actually did yeah, I, 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 in January 2018, I came back from, from South America and I just went on a mission that 2018 is going to be the year of just struggling to pursuing, um, you know, a goal that by 2019, I would be out of the country, landing an international career. And I didn't know, and I said, it doesn't matter what it'll take, 2018 will be the year of me just finding ways, to, you know, to get out by, uh, get out by January of 2019. Yeah, so you took the decision basically a year ago, and then tell us a little bit about what you went through in terms of all of your applications that you were sending out, because I know you had a really busy full-time job. So when were you doing these applications and how were you trying to organize yourself in this, in this job hunt? What were all the things that didn't really work that you were investing your time in? So the first step of, um, after, after setting my vision, uh, setting my goal, um, it took me three months and um, to even uh, apply for dual citizenship with the Netherlands because I was born there so I can have my nationality. So from January until March, I'll give you a timeline, from January until March, I, ha I, I went to the, the Dutch embassy in San Francisco maybe like once a week or so because they kept asking me for documents and, and mind you that I would have to take off time from work go to drive to San Francisco, pay $30 a day for just parking for, let's say, an hour session. I had to pay $30 per hour. So financially, it kind of like hit me hard too. But I knew that at the end of the day, like it will, it'll be all worth it. So from January to March, it took me three months to get my dual citizenship, which would allow me to write that on my applications that I have um, Dutch citizenship to get me into Europe um, without, worrying, uh, without worrying to have a um, work visa. Uh, um, so my schedule was, I have, a, I had a full-time job. I was an assistant director for a non organization providing health promotion for, um, Afghan seniors in, in our community. And we provided health programs. Um, I had oversight 50% of our programs. Um, most of the time my supervisor wouldn't be in the office because uh, she had a, um, ailing husband. So the pressure not only was on me to manage the office, it was also making sure that reports and quarterly reports would be would be drafted and sent in on time. So my shifts would vary from like 9 a.m. to 10, 6 p.m. You know, it's an eight, eight to eight to 10 hour shifts, um, you know, depending on the workload. And at nighttime, I would set these alarm clocks for me on my phone that each hour of the night, I would do a certain activity. So I included working out. I would work out for like 30 to an hour minutes because I needed that, you know, mental uh, break. And then from 9 p.m. until maximum 1 to 2 a.m., I would be sending out at least four applications, um, two to four applications every day. And then I would get these job notifications during the day, and I would resend them to myself. So that's another trick. I would resend them to myself so that I would be on top of my email list. And then knowing that I would go home, I had a to-do list to do for each night. So that lasted about like four months where I would, and I think I made a track sheet roughly, I think close to 70, like 70 plus applications I had a send out. So every night I would have a routine. Um, yeah. So I just want to acknowledge your 
organizational skills and not to mention your motivation because obviously at the end of that of your shift let's say at the end of the work day I don't think you had a lot of you didn't have that energy remaining but you got resourceful and you dug deep and you found the energy so that you could keep following yeah. the process and yeah. then what happened because out of all I know that out of all of those applications you, you hadn't gotten any job offers right no, I, I actually, so each with those large organizations, um, I know it takes at least two to three months just, just to get acknowledgement. So I would get acknowledgements um, besides from the generated um, automated um, emails that they receive my application. I would actually have a, a, a person, or I don't know if it was, it was like a computer that they said that your application is still in the process. And some of them right now, when I look back, they're still in the process. They're not closed. Um, and I've gotten made out of the, like the 70 plus, I've gotten maybe three or four rejections and a one or a couple where they, um, they actually considered my application and I was in the top 10. Um, but unfortunately, um, whatever the reason may be, I wasn't selected, but that's okay. Um, but definitely there's still applications that are ongoing and you never know. I might, I might get a call. <laughs> yeah. But a year later and they're still in the process, right? So at what point did you decide you needed to get help with the process? At what point were you like, okay, something is not working here. Yeah. I'm reaching the end of the year and I still haven't achieved my goal. Yeah. So it was, it was about, uh, it was like in the summer 2018. So earlier on, like probably mid August, I realized that, you know, it's half the year now. And mind you that my search technically started in March of 2018 because that's when I got all my paperwork in order and I thought that okay I can actually put some content on my applications in terms of like getting your resume fixed cover letter all of that um but like summer came and I was like okay well it's you know six you know three months have been passed it's you know half the year and I'm still not getting anywhere and my job is requiring my current job at the moment was requiring so much attention of me that I felt like I I need to change my, my I need to change my approach, and then I I came I went because I need to change my approach. I wasn't utilizing um, LinkedIn as much as I I am now. I wasn't utilizing um, a lot of the things that uh, I were doing now, which we'll talk in a bit. Um, and then so midsummer was a time when I felt I need to change my approach, and I went on social media, and I was just looking through, and I saw I saw your. Um, I don't know how to say it, but I, I saw I saw your page and it was a sponsored page. And I the first thing that caught my eye was like landing an international career. I was like, oh, and it's a female too. I'm like, they're you know, like woman support woman. Good old Facebook <laughs> ads. Yeah. yeah, not but it was just it was intriguing and I clicked on it and um, luckily what really helped for it, which is a great way for you to also recruit other young professionals to really trust. Um, is that you had a free um, a free seminar, a free module seminar, and it was live, and um, it was really interesting to like go on that. And I believe it was like fifteen to forty five minutes. I'm not sure, but right after that, you said that uh, sign up with a free consultation, which was really helpful because a lot of the um, consultations they they charge. Uh, and that's when I went on. I set an appointment with you the next day, and and ever since then things have changed. So I'm really glad I, I came across and met you. Yeah. yeah, I'm so glad that the universe brought us together because this is how the Facebook algorithms go, right? You don't know who's going to actually see your ad, who's going to resonate and all that kind of thing. And then when we, we got on this call, I think we just felt like, oh, wow, this is this is perfect. Yeah. Because, you know, you had been searching for the answer for a little while. You were realizing you weren't getting the momentum you wanted. I was realizing, okay, you're in global health, you have a mission, you want to go at the higher level, you have that, that experience behind you, we can do something with this. And, um, and then, you know, what about what I want to know from you is, how did you, I mean, a lot of people, I know that you're very focused on your goal, and you had this big dream, and you, you just dedicated yourself towards it. However, a lot of people think they're dedicated, or think they're committed, or they say they are, um, but then they let obstacles get in the way, right? Because they're, people are short on time. And so they go, okay, it'll happen this year or it'll happen this month. And then the end of the month comes or the end of the year comes and they go, well, it hasn't happened yet, but I'm trying. I mean, you could easily have said, well, I've been trying. Maybe it just takes a little bit longer, a little bit longer, a little bit longer. I mean, and then I know money was a big issue, right? 
Uh, we don't need to talk, we don't need to give the specifics if you don't want to about how much you were earning, but it was an NGO. They were not pay, able to pay a lot of money and you had those $100,000 student debts as well. So you didn't have a lot of money to invest in yourself, to invest in, in coaching, you know, to get a new approach. And what else? And then I know you had the family uh, obstacles. So can you tell us a little bit about those obstacles and why you didn't decide that those obstacles would stop you from moving forward? Yeah, yes. So I think when I made my decision that I was gonna work on getting an international career, um, one of the things was also self-growth. I felt that because like you said, um, there were a lot of um, my obstacles was, these are obstacles against Fidelity is that we put them on ourselves because like you said, anything is possible. Um, and so, but these obstacles for me, what it was financial, uh, financial. Um, I did work for an NGO. I do have responsibilities back, uh, at home where, and at, at points where I had to like say like, you know what, I can't make it this month because you know, like a car payment is due or a car insurance is due. So like you really had to like manage your time and your money. And which was the two things that I um, struggled with because I was so like, I made that decision where like, okay, no, the year 2018 is my year where I finally, finally will take care of myself. Um, and I, and I think with that decision where you say self care was so important for me because I, I, I would always offer it for other people. And, and, and then that's why it took me this long to really pursue my goals that I wanted to do. And so my obstacles were, okay, I have a full-time job. Um, what am I going to do if I quit my job and I'm going abroad? I, I, can I volunteer? I didn't have time to volunteer abroad because I, my feedback was your resume is really strong, but you really don't have some field experience. So how do I get field experience? I need to go out there. So, and I didn't have the time to, vol uh, to volunteer. I couldn't take time off or take a leave of absence to say like, I'm going to go to do a mission, a missionary and come back. Uh, so that was an obstacle. Um, and just to jump in there, the other issue with, with that sometimes is it's kind of like with the masters as well, right? You always think you're lacking, you're always lacking something to get to yeah. where you want to go because you haven't done it yet. So there's always going to be that gap of needing experience to get experience. But then what do you do? Do you go get another, another degree, another masters? Do you go volunteer? After volunteering, they're going to say, yeah, but that was volunteering. That's not work experience. And the cycle can just continue while you try to build yourself up. Yeah, and I felt that too, well, because I, and then I felt, well, looking back at my resume, I felt that, you know, what I have enough work experience for me to even to get notice for an entry level, because mm -hmm. technically, I, I, in America, I'm not entry level, but going abroad, I'm, I'm entry level because of, you know, the different work experience, because it's not work, exp uh, it's not field work, which I've had some limited, I had some field work, but, you know, my point is, is that, you know, um, it came to, there were times where what I said, well, maybe during, um, you know, during a Christmas holiday, it's a two week break, I can go to do a missionary and come back. But then, but then that would be really short. So that, that mission wouldn't work. So I really tried to find gateways of, okay, how can I make, how can I impress more people? So, but that was kind of a wrong approach too. And because I, it wouldn't get me to anywhere. It would only make me lose more money. It would make me lose time. It would, it, uh, and it would, kind of deviate me from from um, from my actual goal and so I also made the decision well like if I'm embarking on on an international career next year I have to quit my current job because it was so time consuming it it needed a lot of attention of me where like I said when I come home I would be really tired but of because I'm just telling myself that you know this is it, it's it, I wrote it down too it's like it's not a job it's a calling like this career yeah, yeah yeah it's not a job it's a calling for me where like I know I can be successful in it and so believing in myself you know really helped me push through that you know like there's going to be sleepless you know sleepless nights there's going to be times where like nothing is happening where you're going to have like a panic attack where like I'm not hearing anything back like what's going on so that's the approach where like you kind of have to be patient and really be present um, you have to focus on your goal. Otherwise the doubts come and the doubts start telling you, oh, you know, maybe this is not for you. Maybe it's too yeah, hard. Maybe next year. That. Yeah. And I've had that experience yeah. and I think you and I, we would, we, I would actually set up a meeting with you like, Dolly, I'm feeling down. Like what need to talk. Yeah, yeah. Like what's going on? Like I, I felt really, um, you know, like, you know, like you had those anxieties where like nothing is working, but in, in actuality you were in the process. 
sometimes we we are so blinded by our own you know like fears and, and like we want immediate results which it could happen you know but it just depends on the process so for me i think i was in this process where like i i sometimes wouldn't i wouldn't see that the light at the end of the tunnel because yeah. you know, you're so driven and you just like want it to happen so you definitely yeah. have to be you're still building the system right and you have to yeah. invest that time and that energy into building the system before you start getting notice yeah and and i think that working uh joining your program and working with you it, you um you also came up with a different approach and i think instead of because if i didn't join you i probably would have kept on applying on the job portals and i wouldn't yeah. be really having conversations with you know with actual representatives or even with other colleagues or um other people who are in similar or similar fields that i wanted to be in mm -hmm. um so i think definitely the approach change and things moved up a lot quicker as well. And the interesting thing is that also you decided to do it while you were still in your previous position, even though it was really yeah. stressful and, and it was a very time consuming position, you had all those responsibilities. Because yeah. I know a lot of people struggle with this where they're going, they get that mentality of, oh, it's either I stay here or I quit my job. And then as soon as I have more time, things will fall into place. Some people think that, and I know for you, it was interesting because you really, you put all of your effort, even while you were working into, into the process and trusting the process. And then you, because of your circumstances, you did have to quit your, your job because you had to do the handover. You had to make sure someone else was really in place. I mean, these are things that stop people. They go, who's going to replace me? Maybe, you know, maybe it's not going to happen. So you managed this whole process. You found an end date. And then it was like, you had the, the panic of, oh no, I'm, my job is ending. But then almost immediately after that, it's like the system kicked in and employers started coming to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, being in the, pro being in this, in, in this process while working full time, it was very difficult because I had a demanding, I had a demanding position and, and, it, and also I'm working in a cultural setting. It's in a culture, uh, multicultural setting. So you, I couldn't just give my two weeks and two weeks notice and just leave. It wasn't that type of um, environment. So I had to make sure I had a backup. I trained my replacement. I made a training manual. I mean, I did, a, you know, like looking back, I made sure that they were in, in good, you know, in good condition and I left. And when I left, there was also a relief because I, I didn't realize that how much uh, energy it was like, I, I, I drained just because being at work all day and then at nighttime I had this other night shift. Mm -hmm. And so but what kept me going is that like, for anyone who's like, for anyone who's in this process is that they really have to believe in their mission. Like I, I, and I feel like that's what made me, you know, get the opportunity that I have now to go abroad is because I really wanted this. I really wanted this mission and I, I, I worked for it and and sometimes it may feel like you're not doing enough and which which at times I felt like to like well maybe I'm missing something maybe it's not working out why am I not getting that WHO or UNICEF position right now but when I was speaking to those people who work at those organizations it's like they all tell me like you gotta start from the bottom up you gotta start from the bottom even though you have a good resume it's you have to just it's a bureaucratic system unfortunately and you really have to work your way up and 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 i and i accepted that so there's a there's two things where like you really have to believe in your mission and then two is accepting that you're going to have to start from somewhere and that somewhere may not be ideal but it's a beginning it's a stepping stone to where you want to go yeah and i think with the stepping stones it's very interesting because a lot of people get stuck on the stepping stone and they start stepping, right? Because you're, you were also on a, a stepping stone before. So yeah. what's different about, you know, and every job should be a stepping stone in the sense that every job should be a growth opportunity. And it's always a stepping stone to the next part of your mission and the next thing that you're doing. But I think what happens is some people get stuck on a stepping stone and it's no longer a stepping stone. It's just what it is. And they don't realize that it could be a stepping stone if they want it to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I and I totally agree with that. It's because you get comfortable in one place, and if if you know that you know this job is just it's just paying your bills. It's it's a like maybe ten percent of your goal that your 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 dream job that it is. 
some people might accept that because, well, well, in today's economy, you know, we are not able to, you know, hiring is so hard. But for me, I genuinely use my old position, my previous position that this is, this is it. Like, this is my, like, there has to be more out there because for me, it's like, I wanted to make a bigger impact. So I kept that in mind saying like, no, I want to have a bigger impact. Mm -hmm. So when I started this process, I said like, wow, like the world could be your oyster. Like it's so big and you know, like there's so many opportunities that you can be and, and how you want to live your life. It's just a matter of like finding the strategic approaches. And I think that that's what people struggle with is like, they don't know what to, how to go about it. And they're not willing to maybe take the effort or they're, they're scared of taking the next step. Because I, I'll be honest, I was scared too, leaving my job, like you mentioned. I, I was scared because that was financially, you know, um, it kept me going financially. But little did I know, like it was so, it was such a small amount of money that kept me going, but it, it, it satisfied me. And so if, imagine that like, this little money is satisfying. You imagine what a lot of money can do to like really keep your goals going and, but then at the same time, remaining humble. To, yeah. you know. And it's, it's that kind of thing where, you know, what, what is your approach? Do you say, Oh, I need to stay where I am. I can't go to the next level or I can't, I can't invest any money in myself because I need to pay my bills and I need to support my family. Or do you go, wow, I'll be able to support them at, a way higher level if I just get a new job and, um, you know, get to the next level of, of that paycheck and obviously of the, the mission and my contribution. Yeah. I think that is because I've, I always, I always believe that you, you can't really help others if you don't help yourself first. And so yeah. that was one of the approaches that I also had in mind where like, well, if this is my mission and yes, making more money is a big part of this uh, of this pro process, but it's also to in order to, you know, to support myself, to support family members, and also to, you know, to be able to contribute more to the world. Like, you know, for me, it's well, like I felt bad, like, well, I can only donate like ten dollars for an organization that I really support and I really uh, believe in their in their work. Um, so it would be nice to say like one day I can give them a bigger check or, or like, or be part of that, that mission. So it's not so much about like financial, it's more about like having a fulfilling job and mm -hmm. yes, monetary is, is plays a big role, but, or plays a role, but I don't think it, it should overshadow or should over, you know, overshadow the bigger picture, which is like having a meaningful and fulfilling um, career and personal life. Yeah. And I, I think, again, it comes back to often our minds create these either or scenarios where either you do something you're passionate about and make a contribution or you earn a living. But it can't be true because most people are not doing work they're passionate about and they're barely surviving on their current salaries. Yeah. So if that can be true, why can't it be true that we can have both? and also contribute more to, to the people around us? And it's the same thing with when you, you feel like, oh, I can't, I can't do anything for myself, I can't take too much time for myself, or I can't invest in myself because I need to be taking care of other people. Well, who is saying that investing in yourself is going to take away from what you can contribute to others? Actually, when you contribute to yourself, when you boost yourself and you become the person you want, making the contribution you want, then you really start up-leveling the people around you. Yeah, uh, yeah, and I think it also it's also like a personal uh, motivational bo uh, boost because you start to feel good about yourself. You start to feel that you're doing meaningful work, and I know that people who are pursuing humanitarian work or public service, it's that it's one of the traits that we have where like we feel good about like helping other people, mm -hmm. and if that could be in a very strategic way, that's that's, that's even a plus because one, you're not hurting yourself, and two, it's like you're enjoying it. Um, you're enjoying you're enjoying your life. So. Yeah, and the work that you're doing, because we spend so much time working, and if you don't feel like that work is really contributing, and there's really yeah. a purpose in it, it's like, what is the point of our, what is the point of our life? Yeah. And I know that's dramatic, but really, we spend, I think this statistic is 70% of our lives at work. So are you spending 70% of your life doing work that you don't believe in? It's yeah, crazy. And, and then that's so true, because like, at my, at my old job, I, I felt like, Another thing is that, like, at the end, everything became a little bit very repetitive. It became, it became like a system. So, like, you know, every day it became a routine where 
um, you know, I've maxed out personal growth. I've maxed out mm-hmm. the growth that I can have at my job. Mm-hmm. And, and so it wasn't I, even that you didn't have purpose there. I mean, it was a great NGO that you were you were yeah, working. It's not that you didn't have purpose. It's just that you knew. I think with you, it's and this happens to people where when you start feeling that discomfort, you start feeling a little bit dissatisfied about where you are. It's not that it's necessarily a, a bad role or a bad place. It might be a great role and a great place, but you've just started to outgrow it because you know that now you're ready to make a bigger contribution. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's also in a place with confidence because I felt I was, and and I felt, you know, I felt really comfortable in my current job, but I also, I felt Mm -hmm. very um, uneasy and unrest because I knew that there was something more out there. And, and I felt like I wasn't giving my, wasn't given my fullest potential or I wasn't Mm -hmm. receiving my fullest potential as well, because I, 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 you know, because of it's an NGO, I felt like there has to be something more out there. And, and that's what kept me going too. where like, you know, like I know that I, 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 when I talk to people, you just like randomly with my career or my aspirations, they're, they're motivated by me. And I'm like, well, Hey, if I'm able to motivate you and mentor you, then I'm sure I can do this like on a larger scale. Mm-hmm. And so it's also having the confidence in yourself to trust that, you know, you are going into the unknown, but that unknown becomes a familiarity. And then, you know, and that will take you to the next step, which is also another unknown, but all those unknowns become, you know, no, like familiar. Yeah, getting so. comfortable with the unknown and, and just embracing it. And I think yeah. you know, the unknown usually comes with a lot of fear, right? And the fear will start making all these justifications about why you should not enter that unknown. Yeah. And I think that's what's scared too. From was like, well, I'm going into the unknown. Like, like it was scary mm-hmm. because, you know, halfway through the pro- 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 process, I was like, well, like, am I really prepared for this? Like there'll be times where I'm just like going into bed and I'm like, you know, in a few weeks I'll be sleeping in a different country, you know, like I'm by myself, like how, you know, like, are you mentally prepared for this? So I think that like, that another thing what we also have to keep in mind is that like, yes, the idea is so great that living internationally, living and mm-hmm. in, you know, having all that, but for young professionals, we also have to make sure that you are like mentally prepared for it. And I think like you you can get as mentally prepared for it as you can but um I mean there's always the unknown but I feel like you also have to be prepared for it and not just to like jump into into this huge I don't know how to say this but like to just to jump into a a um like into a goal or something like I, I felt like you I I did I did make some preparations for me to go abroad and I think that will it helped my process to become more successful and for me to buy myself time where I can continue networking rather than like, you know, getting an additional job because that, that did happen where like I saw a gap from my, when I quit my current job um, to going overseas, I, I had this, uh, um, you know, gap time gap and I figure okay well maybe I can go work at um in, in clinical research because I have some background in clinical research or biopharmaceutical companies where I can make some a lot of money and I did have recruiters calling me but I felt like that was time consuming and it's going to take me away from you know spending time on you know working on my actual goal but and and that money would have been temporarily like it wouldn't have been helpful but yeah. because I did the the planning where like okay each month I would financially save this much money so that by 2019 I can worst comes to worst if I do have to volunteer I I still I have backup I have backup but I think so much of your success comes from like you were saying that mission and for those of you who don't know because the um a few moments ago Arzo looked kind of this way it's because she has a board where she has her mission to remind her of what is her end goal and I think that this is really like the the base of your success and this needs to be the base of anyone's success. When you want to do, when you want to get the kind of roles that everyone else wants and nobody's able to get, you will not get those roles if you're always in that doubt of, I mean, there tend to be two, two parts of us, right? There's the part where, where we are right now, whether that's that you're not, you're doing work that's not so fulfilling or not making the contribution you want for many people, it's being quite underpaid or even unemployed sometimes. So there's that version of you, which a lot of people are looking to change. And then there's the future version of you, which is the goal, contributing to your mission, being paid what you're worth, working with the kind of colleagues you want to be working with, you know, your, your goal, your ideal scenario. And then a lot of people who live their lives jumping back and forth between the two versions where they go, oh, I'm feeling motivated. And I'm feeling like I deserve this. And I'm feeling like it might be possible for me because I see someone else 
who who seems to think it, who it happened for, and then they'll have the other version where they're going, this is too hard, or it'll happen one day, but not today, not tomorrow, maybe the next day. And if you keep flip-flopping between these two versions, and I'm not saying the fear isn't going to come up, even for the most mission-driven person, the fear, right, will still be there. I mean, look at ours, though, the doubts are going to come and all of that. But if you allow yourself to just be flip-flopping constantly back and forth, there is no way you can meet, meet that goal because the, the fears are going to take priority because that's where you are right now. Yeah, and I think that's what happens is that like there are times when you really have to set your priorities that, um, you know, for, for the goals that you want to achieve because, you know, we all have our personal life. We all have our daily, you know, daily routines. You come home and from work or you have to do certain things. But remember is that like, in the evening or even in the mornings, however your work schedule is, that you have to allocate some time for that goal. And I think that's what helped me send the applications, even though I don't know what the outcomes of those are, but like networking, going on, you know, like another approach that Dolly and I did was like being active on LinkedIn, sending out cold call, cold messages to, cold comments, not like <laughs> cold call messages to uh, just people that you think are are like you want to you know you want to get to know more about their uh, about their roles and their and their and how they've um, you know how they got to where they are and how they are um, you know like how or how they can refer you to some other you know some mm -hmm. other people so I think you know allocating time in your schedule every day is gonna like it's gonna really it, it helped me to get to where to get to where, where I want to be and right now what I'm doing my next my next mission is moving to Lebanon uh, for a few months for a project but you know who knows where that's going to take me and so again that's the I'm, beginning it's the beginning <laughs> yeah lots, who, lots more unknowns it's exciting. Like it's an unknown. <laughs> unknown beds, unknown uh, field work, unknown places and people you're going to be working with. Yeah. But, Very and exciting, then, right? Yeah, and, and I wanted to say is that like, that's not the end of it. And I know that another like fear can come over like, okay, once I'm done with this project, what's going to happen next? Yeah. And, and I think that like, I, I kind of block those messages or, or those thoughts because it's not going to take me anywhere. Like I, mm -hmm. so instead, I've been just continuing what I'm doing with like networking, keeping up to date with, with people, rosters, you name it. Like it's just an ongoing process. So rather than thinking like, okay, this is dead end. No, like I, I take that thought out. <laughs> yeah. You just, you really learned. And I mean, you, you had this from the, the beginning, but even more so it's like you, once you made the decision and the commitment to your mission, it was just getting more and more and more focused on that uh, throughout the process. And, um, and then in terms of, what's that? I say, I'm sorry. It's like, and it feels good when you complete yes. like your, your task for the night or something. It really, mm -hmm. like, I think that's what also kept me motivating. It's like, okay, well, you know, I'm so tired tonight. It's like 10 PM, but you know, like I need to like send out, I need to like revise something quickly, or I need to send out this application very quickly. And then yeah. that's it. So like, yeah. even doing like one task a night is so fulfilling. Yeah, and so I really want, I need to acknowledge you because you you have been so organized and this really shows the professional that you are as well. And it, it also shows that you're gonna do a great job in your future roles because she's so organized, so professional, and you just you just do everything that it takes. I mean, you you literally had every excuse in the book if you had wanted to make excuses. And instead, you just acknowledge that I have this challenge to deal with, and you organized your way around or over every single obstacle. And I think in terms of obstacles people have, I'm pretty sure you had every single one of them in the book. And you just managed your way above and below, and you know, you found a way. Yeah, yeah. And, and so imagine the work you're going to be able to do in your next projects. Yeah, that, yeah, I'm excited for it. And I... I, you're right. I think it's these obstacles, I, and but it's all at the end of the day. It's like accepting the challenges, accepting that it is going to be a struggle, but also accepting that like this is, you know, it should be fun for you at the same time. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's like I said, you should like for me the challenge was like because I know like each week we're like, well, Arzo, you have to reward yourself or like treat yourself because you completed yeah. this mission or you you set what you needed to do or and it, it got done. But for me, it was like, I always, I held it in. I'm like, okay, no, like I'm not done yet. I'm not there yet. Yeah. I'm not 
different angle, but I you don't deserve like, it yet, right? Yeah, and it's like yeah. you really have to be present in the pro in the process, and I think that's going to help you keep motivated, and it actually put less stress on you where you you're, you have a clear thinking of finding other strategies. And I think that's yeah. what We tend to block ourselves off where we just get so yeah. stuck in yeah. what doesn't work. And in, and these are this is where, you know, exactly what we we're just talking about with the obstacles. Those mm-hmm. obstacles can create walls around you where people will say, oh, you know, like maybe there are people watching right now where they go, okay, I know Arzo is, seems to be doing pretty well, but maybe she has more money than me. Maybe she has more time than me. I know she says she's busy, but she can't be as busy as me. Or maybe this, where some people might be thinking, well, she probably has more experience than me. It sounds like she's very experienced from what she's saying. So I don't have that much experience or whatever it is, right? So all of these obstacles are going to come up and your brain will always justify, oh, but that person is different. Maybe it worked for them, but maybe not for me. And then these obstacles can either block you in where you go, oh, there's a wall. So it's not going to happen. Or sometimes, you know, when you really have that mission, you won't say it's not going to happen, but you'll say, oh, it's not going to happen now. Yeah. Yeah. Those obstacles are still there. The walls are still going to be there. And so if you don't make a decision to climb over the wall now, the wall will still be there a year from now, two years from now, or sometimes it'll be a different wall, but it's still the same wall. Yeah. Yeah. And it is. And then like those walls are going to keep, you know, going higher and higher. If like you, if we don't tackle them, if we don't tackle our, you know, like, again, like when that blockage happens, you, you start thinking, okay, no, what's my mission again? So then you remind yourself. And I think that for me is like writing out my mission clearly and have it, um, clear in front of me every single day it's like it brought me back into that thought mode of like okay that's why I'm doing this today or because there'll be times where like I'm I'm waking up I'm completely fatigued I was you know so like tired sometimes you have like brain fog because you couldn't think clearly but then like once you see you know once you see and you have to give yourself breaks as well and I think that's that's something where like I would allow I wouldn't allow myself in the beginning of the process where like it has to be ongoing ongoing but then towards the middle I was like you need a day off you need a few hours off where like you need to you know retract yourself and you know take a breather and then continue it again but don't take a long break (laughs) don't get off track because this happens a lot as well and I'm glad we're discussing this over the holiday period because Um, it's interesting over the holiday period, a lot of people sometimes will go, well, it's the holidays, I'll start in January. And there's nothing wrong with enjoying your holidays and relaxing and taking time off. That is absolutely necessary. And we discussed this where I was telling you, Arzo, you were working really hard, take one full day off. (laughs) But that one day can easily lead to another day and another day and another day. And then family needs this from you and that from you. And that's where you can get off track as well. So you have to always find that that balance right yeah I think that's so important because the thing is that like when you're living with family they, they can see you being stressed they can see you like multitasking they it's can tough see on them that you don't see and so yeah. they'll tell me like Arjun you need to take a you need to take a break excuse me and I was like well I've been taking a break for two days now I think that's enough or like, yeah, I was like yeah. I have to get back into it so there were times especially with my cultural background is that like we would have family gatherings we would mm-hmm. have you know like you know like travels day trips you name it and um but there were there were times where I had to say no because I had to prioritize my work and I think that's a hard challenge too is that like mm-hmm. um being so close to home is that like you have to kind of step back but to you don't have to step back where you can really detach yourself enough but just enough where like you allow yourself to allocate a few hours again to work on your mission on your goal and I think that's what helped me and and another thing is that like they saw how driven I was that I was so serious about this is that like um I had the support that I needed as well so I think that's a great another way where I have found me to support me as well. But um, that's fantastic, and I like I like what you mentioned where they're they're supporting you because they see how important it is to you. And this can happen yeah. a lot where again with the flip flopping, if if you're flip flopping, then you scare your own family because you're you're going. I think I want to reach this goal. I'm feeling like I want that, but yeah. you no, know, I'm not. Yeah, I'm flip flopping then your family gets scared for you and they want to protect you. And they'll say, you know, why don't you just stay where you are right now? You seem okay. Or, or, oh, it's okay. It'll all work out. And they'll just try to make you sort of feel better where you are now. 
Whereas if you tell them, this is what I want, this is what I'm going for, for I refuse to accept anything else, I need your support, then of course they're going to rally behind you because they see that you're serious about it. But if you bring fear to the table and you're discussing your fear with them and you're, you're showing them more fear than commitment, then they're going to side with your fear because they're going to think that's what you want from them. They're going to think you want them to help you justify where you are right now. And yeah. And that's yeah. true. And I think it's also for me is that like, you know, the goal, the goal was like, they saw my vision. I, and I, we, I have this other coworker where they, we, um, we both came up with the word white whiteboard therapy. So like I, which I recommend to all of the viewers is that having a big whiteboard, like a big whiteboard, and then just writing out your goals, your daily steps, your monthly steps, to-do list, like all on one big board so that every morning when you turn around and you look at the board, it is just, it motivates you to do the work. It, it just, there's just something about like writing out your goals is that it's so satisfying and it makes everything so real. Some people are, you know, for some people it helps. Like I'm a more of a visual person. So I like everything because it clogs up, it clogs up my mind. So when I have it all, you know, cleared in front of me, I think that helped me with, um, you know, taking the step. So. Yeah, I love that you were doing that and that you shared that on our group coaching calls as well. Did, yeah. Get a whiteboard, everyone. Stay focused on your mission. And I love when you guys start coaching each other with your own experience. And that's where you can really see, okay, you know, they've, they've got this. They're starting to coach <laughs> yeah. others on what works. Yeah, yeah. And, and yeah, so that's just, you know, one of the simple ways of, you know, doing that. But other than that, um, I think just, just, um, just also in believing in yourself, I think is really helpful. Like these are, it, it all really depends on like your mental health, like how you really feel about yourself and how confident you are and how driven you are. And I feel like I was so driven to one point where like I was willing to give everything up to like, just to get that international goal. And when I say willing to give everything up, meaning like, I'm talking about like my current job, I, I quit my job, I gave my notice which is great because I now I have about I had three weeks going into two now where I decongested I just started preparing myself on taking the project into Lebanon which was which is my next step um so yeah. tell us a bit about Lebanon so what are you most excited about in terms of the work you're going to be doing there well, uh, I think it's just being in the field one um, not because I need it. It's because I'm going into the Middle East. I'm going to Lebanon. Um, it is a field that I've studied in. I got my uh, minor in Middle Eastern studies. I'm excited to firsthand work with people who are doing public health work. What I've been, what I've been doing, what I've been envisioning all my life where like I'm in the field, I'm creating programs or I'm managing programs that are beneficial for like women and children, um, you know, alleviating poverty. And, you know, like I'm really excited about like, you know, being part of that uh, movement. And so, and, and, and also scared at the same time, because this time I'm in a, I'm in a high level role where I provide supervision, I provide leader, you know, like leadership. So, you know, here at my old job, I had a partner, I had a partner, but this time the partner who was executive director, she is abroad, um, but who will be traveling back and forth to Lebanon. But I think it's taking on the challenge of like, okay, Arzo, this is a time where you have to prove yourself that you can, you can, you know, lead a program that you know you've been doing it for quite some time now and this is an opportunity where you know you're I'm exposed to the environment that I want to be in the culture the people um you know the vulnerable communities um really um putting data out there for people to understand that this is a serious problem and you know like help is needed out there um so I'm just excited about that and just also to experience it um, just the, the experience of working abroad, how that feels, because I've traveled a lot for leisure, but, and, and I've done some missionaries, but this is very different. Like, I don't know, maybe cause this is more prof like, this is at a professional level where like, this could be my future. Like it's, it's a glimpse of what my future can be. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of like you're, you have that dream and you've been thinking about the dream for a long time and now you'll actually be in it and going, yes. Is this yeah. going to be the rest of my life? Is this where my life is headed? And what's what will it really feel like yeah. there, right? Yeah, yeah. I oh, think I'm that's... so excited for you. I want to I want to come in your suitcase. <laughs> it sounds really exciting. Come visit me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
I'm really excited for you. I mean, that that's going to be such an amazing opportunity. And you are going to be amazing there. I, even though, of course, we're, we always have these doubts of, will I, will I rise to the challenge? I mean, if you show up in the way that you have shown up throughout this whole process, you are going to blow everyone away and you're going to deliver so much value. And by the way, guys, I mean, these are the kinds of, we need more professionals like Arzo in the field. And that's where we want to try to get more people like her in there who are making a difference, who are bringing their expertise, but not only the expertise, but just the willingness to do things in the best way. And I mean, you have so many skills that you're bringing beyond just your ex your bare bones experience, but just your, your willingness to be very organized, to help other people, to show up really, really professional, to, you know, just organize the data and make sure that you're getting the best possible outcomes. I mean, these are the kind of professionals that we need more of to get more of an impact in these projects. Thank you. I appreciate your help, your support. It's been, I think I've been blessed just coming across, you know, you know, Dahlia and this whole process like it has changed my life too and I would I just want to mention too like this um, you know our process wasn't just about like okay land that job go make the money go live your life like it, w if it was more into that like you really like steeped into like our thought process about our you know like our personal well-being um, just everything so it wasn't just like you know get that job okay next client get that job and then next time like it wasn't like that at all. it was very personal and I felt like and that and I feel like that's the only way really to like become successful is to really you know dig out whatever you have inside of you um to clarify your thoughts take care of your well-being and then like go pursue that dream because that dream is not possible if you're not like mentally stable and I'm not saying that we're not, none of us are like mentally stable but I'm just saying like you like when I like you really have to believe in your goal and that goal you know, it's not possible that, 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 that believe is not possible if you yourself don't work on yourself first. Like, so yeah, I think it, it requires that mental up leveling and like you're saying, clarification about your vision. And the reason we, we do all of this up leveling, this mental up leveling, this focus on success prin principles, it's not just because it's, it makes you feel good or, yeah. you know, just to give you something extra. Uh, besides just that job, but it's because you need these things in order to get to where you want to go. And because it's not just about getting that next position. This is about the rest of your life. And this is about the rest of your career. And most of all, being able to be in a specialist position, creating yourself as the specialist that you want to be. And, um, and in order and being a specialist, I think that this gets misinterpreted. People think being a specialist is about your years of experience. And it's not because there are people with 30 years experience who are still not really seen as a specialist for various various reasons. I, either they, they might have just been doing the same thing over and over again, so they're just seen as doing that one thing, or sometimes they, uh, they've been jumping around from different positions because they're confused about what their mission is and what they want to do, and so they don't get recognized. And so if you want to be a specialist, you need to create yourself as that specialist. You need to have the system. You need to start getting that recognition, having people coming to you. And that's why we need to work on all of the up-leveling and figuring out who, who are you and who is the future you and how do we achieve that and get others to also notice who you've become. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And I think that, I, that, and that's so important. I think that's one of the main key principles of like just being successful is to have that, you know, well-being clarifications and, and, you know, and, all, and, be, and finding ways on how to deal with the next challenges. So instead of getting scared, and being pushed back, you would actually take on the challenge. And I think that's all part of, you know, the key principles of having good well-being. Yeah. 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 And living a happy life and supporting the others who are important to you and the planet and everything, everything fits together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Well, Arzo, it's been so wonderful. So, so wonderful to have you in the program. And I'm so happy that the Facebook algorithms brought us together because you never know who uh, who's going to come across the algorithm and I feel so so lucky that, that we were able to meet each other and you've been a big inspiration as well for the other people in in the group and I'm really excited about where you go next do you have any last advice for someone so someone who's in that process of going oh I I think I want to achieve more and they're on the online job boards and they're applying basically to your past self I mean what would be your advice to them 
mean, it's as simple as like really like believing in your in your mission. I feel like I think that like give give yourself time to make that goal um, allow itself to unfold into what you want it to be. I feel like so definitely be patient, but impatient in terms of accepting that you are, you know, like you are going to get there with, as long as you take the steps. You, as long as you are willing to put in the hours and allocate the hours for yourself, you know, like take care of yourself, but, you know, always, you know, believe in that, believe in that, that mission that you have. And I, I'm sure it will come true. And, you know, like I said, the first uh, milestone, it may not be where you want it to be, but it's going to get you where you want, where you are, where you want to end up because um, you are, you're constantly moving. And I think that's what it, what's great is that, you know, like you're constantly moving, even though it may not seem like that, but as long as you're doing something every single day, little by little, it'll get to where you want it to be. And just, you know, believe in yourself first, believe in the mission fully and know why you're doing it and, and how you want to do it. And I think, you know, that that's success right there. Success isn't just like where you end up. It's just success on how you've done the process, how you've been through the journey. I think there's so much growth in that journey where like we tend not to, we tend to miss out on and, or to block it because mm -hmm. we are so, you know, focused on that end goal, but it's very important, um, you know, being present in the, in the process. Cause that's where you get your brightest ideas. You get your brightest strategies, you know, like that's when you feel like, okay, where you, you're most successful. So. I love that. Thank you so much. And so, yeah, again, wonderful to work with you. And we will be watching you. what you do in Lebanon. So make sure you keep posting about that and let us know what's happening. Yes. And uh, and I hope you guys got to learn something from Arzo's journey. Obviously, everyone's journey is different and everyone's process is different. You know, the things that worked for her and the things that were key to her success are going to be different from other people's key to success. But the, I think the, the point is here that you, I mean, I, I think that the big, big takeaways are really that focus on number one, the mission, which some people haven't figured out what their mission is. So that would be the first thing is really knowing what your mission is, because without that clarity, you just, you can't, you can't move forward. And then once you know what the mission is and you know what steps to take towards it, then it's that perseverance, getting, just clearing all the obstacles or getting away over or around or under under those obstacles not letting anything wall you in and and block you and then you can you can get there yeah yeah not to stress too much <laughs> absolutely yeah not to get yourself down focus on focus on the outcome and to putting in the work absolutely all right arzo well thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story i'm sure that that helped a lot of people because i know a lot of people are facing some of the challenges that that you had to face as well. And I think it applies really well to other people who wanna go into global health or any kind of an international position, but even people who are just getting stuck where they are right now or who are feeling undervalued or who are feeling like they could be growing more than they are. I mean, it applies to a large segment of the young professional population. Yeah, so exactly. thank you for sharing. I'm glad I was able to share my experience. Thank you for listening and thank you for the journey. Thank you for everything really enjoy working with you yeah all right well have a good rest of the day and excited to see what's next what when once those unknowns become known we're looking forward to seeing how they unfold and i know that they're going to unfold really well there's nothing nothing scary i mean it's scary but it's scary yeah it'll be exciting scary for you know. thank you again dahlia i will keep all of you guys updated Absolutely. perfect perfect thank you so much all right okay you. bye, bye.